So, okay, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, good afternoon. It's 5.02. I am uh, Richard Wee from Richard Wee Chambers. Uh, we'll just give uh, a few more minutes for everyone to come on board. Um, today, uh, and I'll repeat this later for those who came in a bit later. Um, today, the topic of discussion is pertaining to the impact of the pandemic on law firms in Klang Valley. Uh, um, this is part of uh, my personal endeavor. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've great concern for my fellow members of the bar. Uh, and I think all of us are going through uh, challenging times. Um, the fact that the bar council, uh, I think probably rare moment in history, have given all of us discount for our subscription, says it all for our position uh, currently and um, so I, I think we, we some of us may want to comment on that uh, the, the way council is running things I think they're doing what they can uh, but we'll see and for your information before we start tomorrow uh, uh, Cassandra Polim and Nimalan tomorrow I am hosting the president of uh, Sabah Bar Roger Chin and the president of Malaysia Bar uh, Salim Bashe at 11 a.m. tomorrow so they are going to uh, share with us what is happening in Sabah Bar and Malaysian Bar. Yeah, I think, I think that would be tomorrow. very interesting. Um, coming from Sabah myself um, and having been called there, I think that would, I mean, I, I'll be quite interested in, in hearing what's, what's happening over there as well. Yeah, interesting. So both uh, the president, Sabah Bar and our bar president, have already made a uh, public comment that the government uh, uh, should enact laws, temporary laws, similar to the one in Singapore to effectively injunct litigation for the next six months in certain areas of uh, law. And I think that's something which, is, which will be welcome. Okay. Um, so, okay, without further ado, it's 5.05. This is how we're going to run this uh, webinar. We will first start by uh, letting each speaker to introduce themselves. After that, I will set the tone by uh, going through some of the proposed topics of discussion. Uh, we will then have a dialogue among the three speakers. Um, we will uh, suggest all uh, members who are logged on to watch this, please put down your question. Uh, we will try to address the question as we go. I repeat, the topic is about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on law firms in Klang Valley. So the speakers will be sharing their observation, their opinion, and some may even offer some solution uh, based on the experience of their law firm. And hopefully, my personal ambition is that at about 6 o'clock, some of us will get some ideas on what to do with our law firm. Yeah, that's it. Eh? So without further ado, can I first invite Cassandra to introduce herself, uh, your name, which firm you're from, and basically what you are doing. All yours, Cassandra. All right. Thanks, Richard. Thanks um, again for having me. Um, my, my name is, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Cassandra Lee. I'm a partner at Thomas Phillip. We are a litigation only law firm. So essentially our practice is predominantly only litigation, arbitration and mediation. So um, in, on, on a personal level, I am in the corporate and commercial dispute resolution team. And I do practice in the niche area of contentious probate. Oh, very niche. Well done. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, Cassandra. Um, can I invite, uh, uh, before I invite the next uh, speaker, unfortunately, his internet is sometimes slightly lagging. So give him some uh, space to, 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 to converse himself. Um, so Nimuran, uh, the handsome guy, um, I, I see you are in a, uh, some jersey. Uh, some, uh, what, what club is that? I'm not sure. But uh, maybe you can share with us where you're from, uh, which law firm you are working at. Uh, and what work you're doing. All yours, Nimalan. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Nimalan. I'm a partner at Screen. Uh, we are a full service law firm in the heart of KL. I do exclusive litigation, uh, primarily focused on commercial and corporate litigation. Uh, the jersey I'm wearing is Manchester United. Uh, <laughs> like the legal industry now, we were once at the top, having a slight downturn, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be successful from next year onward. Okay, I love the optimism. Very good optimism. And um, 
Last but not least, a close friend of mine, um, someone I have seen grown from a young lawyer to a formidable uh, partner, uh, and he and his and he and his fellow partners I call as my close friend. Can I uh, invite uh, Kenneth Wong Polim to introduce yourself? Thanks, thanks, Richard. Uh, I think before I introduce myself, I think I just want to make an observation. Uh, Nims, I think the you are lagging because the club you are supporting is also lagging behind every other club in the UK as well. So that possibly could be the reason. Uh, anyway, joke aside, uh, I'm Kenneth. Uh, I'm currently a partner in uh, Daniel and Wong. Uh, I specialize in the area of corporate and commercial law. Uh, we consider ourselves a boutique firm. We have about seven lawyers and 10 staffs. Uh, so it's a relatively small and comfortable size. Yeah. Well done, Paul. Um, I, I know you've worked very hard to build uh, the firm from ground zero up. And I was there when you started with a small office space. And I'm very proud to see you grown to be, like I said, in my words earlier, a, such a formidable firm. Well done, Paul. Good to see you guys growing. And uh, even Nimalan, uh, I actually moved his call to the bar many years ago. So I, uh, when yes. I, I was told by Lee Shi that he was going to be a partner, I felt a sense of pride that, you know, this boy who I moved a call is now a full-blown bearded man and uh, really proud to see you growing. And as for Cassandra, I've always followed her on Twitter. Always, uh, oh, dear. Uh, yeah, you, she's very eloquent <laughs> uh, in her tweets. Uh, not easy to be eloquent in 140 letters. Now, of course, 280. But here I have finally have her on uh, the webinar and sharing the same platform with her. Well done, uh, Cassandra. And um, so today's uh, discussion will be this. We will be first discuss about what is the effect of the current MCO on law firms currently. So each of them will give uh, their observation and their uh, comments from their law firm's point of view. Uh, we will start off with, of course, Cassandra first. Then later on, uh, we will talk about the long-term impact of this pandemic uh, on law firms. So what changes they may see uh, of course, this is a bit of a, uh, um, uh, some, some, some guesswork, I suppose, but these are all uh, calculated guess based on people who are partners who what they think they foresee may happen. And the last part of our session, which I hope will be by about 5, I'm looking at my clock at about 5.40 uh, on, onwards, we will talk about proposed solution for law firms. What Polim tends to do, what... Um, Nimbalan can do at screen what screen is intending to do and what Cassandra and her, his law, her law firm is planning to do. So uh, I'll start off first, first question, and I'll invite Cassandra to have a start followed by Nimbalan and then Polim. Um, Cassandra, at the moment, looking at the, the lockdown, which is already entering the, the 30th day or 31st day, I've lost track of the days. Um, what has the effect so far been on your law firm or yours, Cassandra? All right. Thanks, Richard. I think um, generally everybody is going through the same phase. Um, the most obvious impact, I think, for most firms or all firms would be the financial impact. So let's let's put it out there. We are, um, cash flow wise, obviously, we are managing it very closely. We are um, expecting our clients to be coming to us and saying that in the next couple of months, um, cash flow is tight. You know, we, we can't really make payments on time and they're going to be asking for um, um, solutions and, and, and um, um, alternatives, yeah, for on, on agreed fees as well. So that's that's already been happening. We've already had our own clients coming to us and say, look, I know I have an agreed fee with you. Um, can you just help me out, you know? Um, will my case proceed, you know, accordingly? If, you know, just because I'm a little bit tight on cash flow, how can we work things out? So I think that impact is, is very obvious. Of course, as a firm, we have not, um, I wish I will, I will touch on probably later. Um, we have not gone through um, cost cutting yet. We have not reached that stage. But of course, we are looking at um, cash flow very um, closely. And we are taking steps, preemptive steps, yeah, to make sure that we don't have to go down the cost cutting route. Um, work wise, we do see that, you know, we are we're all still working, right? The firm is um, um, still. In, 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 in a sense, operating from home, everyone's operating from home, there's still work, um, which is pretty much a spillover from before the MCO, right, from based on billings and collections that we've, we've managed um, before the MCO. Um, we, I mean, th there is still some new uh, new work coming in. Of course, being, being very honest is not 
as much as we, we, we've seen, let's say, towards the, the end of last year in comparison. Um, I think the other impact for us would be that we are forced to do things um, quite differently. For example, it has affected the way we are marketing and um, doing our business development. So, for, for example, we've been running this um, SME table talks. We've been getting people to coming to our offices, lay people coming to our offices for our talks every week, every Thursday. And obviously that, that now, uh, which was something that has gained traction, that's something that we can't do now. So we obviously have to innovate and think of other ways of um, being visible. And, and I think there is also um, a positive to it. The positive, I think, is that we've now all realized that we can actually work from home. And that my, my gut feeling is from basically from just looking at how everyone is functioning in the firm, um, everyone seems to be more productive. I see when my juniors um, send, send me work, the turnaround time is a lot shorter now. So I, I think in, in that sense, it's not all gloom and doom. Mm. Can I ask a question uh, on, on, uh, for Cass before we move on to Nimelin? Yes. Um, can I ask, and you don't mind me inquiring, how large is your uh, workforce with regards to the lawyers and non-lawyers? Okay, um, at the top of my head, I think we have about 20 lawyers. I could, I could be wrong, yeah, but um, that, we, yeah. Have about, we have um, six partners, a mediator. Sorry, seven, seven, seven partners. Mm. So we, we are, I think, in, in that sense, a bit of a mid-size, what you call a mid-size um, yeah, no in, in Klang Valley, that would be, yeah, that's very safe to say it's a, uh, now, now there's even a, this phrase I've heard, a small mid-sized firm. There's a large mid-sized firm, small mid-sized mm -hmm. firm, and then there's firms like mine, Boutique. And I think both uh, Polim and I are Boutique firms, small firms, yeah. Okay, uh, good point. So good start. At least we can see that your firm is going through some uh, changes, of course, and I can sense that you, your, your team is already... Uh, making moves to change things in, in months to come. I can sense the way you talk, right? So, okay, we'll yes. come back to that. We'll hold on to that 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 uh, point. We'll come back to that. So, Nims, um, at Screen, Screen is a grand old, uh, you know, law firm in the Malaysian uh, bar. Uh, Screen, Shuklin, Shen, the, the 3S, you know, these are all firms that have been around for a long time. Um, what What is the um, uh, current um, feel from the firm? The, how... How, what do you feel is going to happen, uh, is, is happening now in screen? All yours. Well, I should caveat by saying they're not part of the management of the committee of the firm. So I won't have as much uh, detailed uh, ideas as someone like Polim or even Cassandra might have. But the feeling that the firm is getting as well, firstly, um, obviously cash flow is a consideration. So cost cutting measures are being looked into insofar as what we call non-essential expenses. So things that may not be essential for the running of the firm, for the growing of the firm, I think they're looking, there's an observation of freezing it. I think what, taking a different aspect from what Cassandra said, what the firm is also looking at uh, is more of a moving towards a digitization of our practice on how to help the lawyers uh, work more efficiently and productively from home. And that's because I think the firm is, and I think we may see this in the future, Uh, looking once the MCO is lifted, to have it staggered and have lawyers continue working productively from home uh, well, for the health and safety purposes. Mm. So we're seeing a lot of discussions within the firm of how you can uh, digitize things, how to conduct research better at home, what sort of tools the lawyers feel they need, and as how important it needs to actually go into the office. That's one. Um, the second thing the firm has been looking at is a lot more business development. So we're having very regular webinars. I think once every, twice a week, there will be lots of different issues, contractual issues, employment issues. Those are the two main areas. And uh, secondly is alert. So screen website itself now has a very dedicated COVID-19 section, which gives you all the updates on what's happening with the country, uh, analysis of the positions taken by the government and its legitimacy. Well, I, I, you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, okay, uh, before we move on to Polim, well said, Nimal, and it's, it's very interesting to see the operations of your firms, you know. Um, 174 people so far, 
exactly one week ago, well, to be more precise, uh, six days ago, we had a similar session where we had a lawyer from Langkawi, one from Kota Baru. In fact, the Kota Baru lawyer is on record in Chi Ahmad Alwi. And then we got uh, the chairperson of the small firms committee, Mr. Jay Balan from Johor Baru, and a fellow KL member, Mr. Chu Diwei. So four lawyers from four corners of Malaya speaking. And of course, their experiences are slightly different from the, the three, two of you so far. They were Their, their firms are very compact, uh, very focused on either doing only conveyancing or only accident cases or only criminal cases. Uh, or in Diwei's case, maybe a lot of uh, family dispute matters. So uh, they all have a very different um, uh, uh, challenges compared to they, they, some of them are going through uh, difficulty to collect fees. Some of them think that they are, the firms may have to go through some sort of uh, 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 employment review, blah, blah, blah. So quite, quite different. Now, um, 171 so far. So, uh, Polim, uh, what has been your observation so far from what you can see and what, uh, you are the owner, unlike... Uh, I, I don't mean to put down Cassandra and uh, uh, Nims, but you are actually an owner of the firm, whereas Cassandra and Nims are uh, partners of firm. Uh, they have other partners working with. So as an owner of your firm, what have you observed so far since uh, we came into this lockdown? All yours, Paul. Uh, right. Uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, I think as per any other law firms in Malaysia or perhaps globally, I think uh, we are also greatly affected by this uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, having zero income uh, whilst trying to maintain the existing overhead uh, is actually extremely challenging. Uh, you know, especially from a business owner perspective, I think uh, looking into your cash flow and not managing it, it's, it's extremely uh, uh, important. You know, but again, saying that, you know, uh, this is always a risk that, you know, we as employers uh, would have to bear, you know, uh, we can't just take the good and not take the bad, you know, we take both and deal with them uh, uh, at the same time, right? So uh, generally, I'm practicing in the corporate and commercial area with, with uh, some real property uh, work as well. So I'll address uh, this area specifically and, and I will not touch on litigation uh, uh, per se, right? Uh, so uh, as for the current impact uh, to the firm, uh, you know, we have been informed uh, by some of our clients uh, that some of the transactions that we have been working on uh, will be postponed, deferred, or even delayed. Uh, in some instances, uh, some of these will be aborted. I think this is very real and understandably so. Uh, this is also very normal because most companies will probably need to uh, re-evaluate their finances, uh, their business direction, and so on and so forth uh, in light of this pandemic. Uh, possibly they will want to allocate their budgets into firefighting more critical issues and, you know, expansion or legal costs will definitely be the last in the list. Uh, in terms of uh, convincing uh, practices, uh, as I think most offices uh, remain closed, uh, we are unable to really ascertain what's the immediate impact at this moment. Uh, but I do think that, you know, the convincing practitioners uh, would have a very difficult time uh, moving forward uh, post uh, this uh, MCO. Of course, you know, I'm not actually the most, you know, tech savvy person among all of us here. Uh, I trust that, you know, uh, Kaz and Neem will probably cover this aspect later on. Uh, so when we address, you know, the remedies, uh, mine would probably be touching on more on uh, things that, you know, uh, we can do immediately at this juncture. So, so that's the direction that I'm heading uh, in this uh, uh, webinar. Right. Mm. Yeah. Well said, uh, well, we can sense that uh, for all those who are viewing, uh, there were there are 178 now. At one time, it was 181. Um, we can sense from the three speakers, um, they are facing the MCO and lockdown from three different angles. Um, from a very, very established and old school firm. Well, when I say old school, I mean they've been around for a long time. His screen is very modern. Uh, they, we have screen, you know. Um, trying to figure out what to do uh, and, you know, looking at cutting costs, as, as Nimalan said, or, or on certain areas which is not necessary, right? So the firm is already taking measures to protect itself. And you can see that uh, uh, from Cassandra's point of view, a, a, a very highly charged, uh, Thomas Phillips is a formidable firm. They have uh, 20 over lawyers there and you can see that, that they are also taking steps to, uh, they're only feeling the change and taking steps to make some improvement here and there. And Polim, as a business owner and the owner of the uh, partner of the law firm, he's already preparing, uh, and he's very clearly put put forward that he will be speaking about corporate work, which is where he's 
uh, specialize in. So very good, very nice. You got two litigation lawyers and one corporate lawyer. Yes, nice. Um, on Sunday, we could have a same session purely on conveyancing. We have three lawyers going to speak about conveyancing. Then you should hear about conveyancing problem. Huh? Another total problem. It's like another world in conveyancing there. So it will be interesting here on Sunday. Okay, back to this. So, Cassandra, um, taking into account what has happened so far the last 30 days, so uh, your partners and you, uh, of course, subject to private information, what do you foresee will be your short-term plan, mid-term plan, and perhaps a, a, a reasonable long-term plan uh, based on what you think will happen, the new normal, they call it, uh, for your firm? All yours, uh, Cassandra. Okay, so um, let's let's just go back to what I was um, saying earlier, that the biggest impact that I think a lot of firms, including ourselves, would be um, experiencing would be in terms of cash flow, right? So there are obviously certain things. I mean, I have to say this. I'm very mindful um, that I am coming from a place where we, are prob we probably have a little bit of a safety blanket than, than probably other firms. So I, I'm quite mindful that I'm coming from that um, perspective. So in terms of cash flow, we are not in really a panic mode at the moment. Um, and this is obviously due to the good management um, of the firm, which has been, been um, doing what they've been doing over the past years, you know, even before I joined the firm. So I think one of the things that has helped us um, a lot, and right now, which we feel that is, is something that, that has um, helped the situation a lot, is that we manage our expenses on a weekly basis. So all salaries in our firm are paid on a weekly basis. Mm. So what I gathered from speaking to the senior partners and to the managing partner is that that has basically helped um, manage our cash flow. So in terms of bonuses as well, bonuses are split up. Uh, each year is split up to six sets in our firm. Bonuses are paid out per set and they're also staggered. So in, in a very good year as an associate, you can see yourself getting a bonus like a bonus payment every single month of the year. Um, so those are the kind of measures that were already in place even before the MCO and which is helping us um, manage our cash flow. Right now at the at this very moment, what we're doing is we are prioritizing payment of only salaries. So we are speaking to all our um, creditors, our suppliers, and ne ne um, basically negotiating deferred payments, staggered payment, payments. All that is to ensure a healthy cash flow towards um, the rest of 2020. Um, that is because we do foresee, um, at least for this month and the coming months, so at least the next two to three months, um, that collection is going to be, be a little bit um, low, yeah, or maybe substantially lower. So um, what the other thing that we have put in place, basically we have um, agreed or partners, uh, partners bonus or profits to be um, deferred and to be paid out um, over the course of 20 weeks. So in terms of cash flow, that's that's what we are doing. Um, I think the other um, crucial thing is, um, which I keep saying, but we, we've not really fully um, decided on this yet. We're still talking and still formulating things. Um, my biggest concern is that I don't think we can go back into um, practice after the MCO, after this whole pandemic is over, um, thinking that we can price our services the same way that we have pr been pricing them. I agree. So, for one, I don't think time cost is going to be a viable um, option for us, especially in litigation. I think, um, come, uh, just, uh, just to take a step back, Thomas Phillips' core clients are SMEs, right? Um, in, in, in my own practice, individuals for probate um, practice. So when, when you are dealing with SMEs um, who are basically, from what we've been reading, they are the... the, the the ones who are most impacted by mm. by um, this whole MCO and the COVID COVID um, situation, you would think that they would want some certainty in terms of um, the billings, right? So I don't think time cost is going to be the thing this year. I mean, as, as a firm, we have already moved on from time cost, you know, and we are pr pretty much predominantly um, fixed fee. Fixed fee. Mm. And, fixed fee. Yeah, mm. yeah, fixed fixed fee. Agreed, fixed fee. Um, and of course, I think um, from for me, I think that we need to we need to repackage our services 
right? Um, I'm not in favor, and the firm is not in favor of um, a a going into a price war to undercut um, other firms. I think we are very clear and we, are, we feel very strongly about that, that at the end of the day, Thomas Philip does have somewhat of a reputation and a goodwill, that to go into this whole price war thing to undercut services, uh, undercut fees, um, it will just be the death of our reputation. So yeah, I agree. again, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful that I'm coming from this perspective where we have a certain level of comfort to be, to be able to say that, yeah. right? So, but I, I do think that, um, you know, it's just my perspective and the perspective of the firm that the clients that we want after this are also not going to be the clients who want the cheaper services. Mm. They are going to, going to be the ones who want quality services at an affordable price. So they, they will feel, they need to feel that they are obtaining services, you know, um, with value added benefits. So well, I think, yeah. yeah, so I think, I think those are the things that we have to um, be, be thinking. Oh, well said, Cass. Oh, look, you, uh, no, no wonder Thomas made you partner there. Huh? Wow, you're like a spokesperson for the firm. <laughs> but well, I, I, mean, I really like, yeah, no, but I really like your approach because, you, uh, of course, you all have to be sensitive. Uh, last week when we met and we spoke to law firms and in my last two, three weeks uh, dealing with many lawyers, many are going through a financial cripple. It's really, really bad. And I think some firms may have to close. You know, it, it, it's that difficult. So I, I like the way you're careful with the way you said it and uh, and you are, you are you're pragmatic. Lah. Your firm is pragmatic that they are getting ready to readjust the way you work. Uh, very good. We will come back to you on that later. Um, Nims, so with this uh, situation that's happening, what do you think uh, screens uh, short-term, mid-term, and maybe... Uh, well, we don't really know how far we can go, right? Long-term. Long-term. What, what kind of screen plans? Uh, I mean, are you going to do more corporate work, uh, more advisory work, uh, even your litigation, you, you know, you cut down here and there. Are you going to do a work from home more? You know, can the staff... Uh, uh, work from uh, operate from home more, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What 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 are screens plans? So I think in the short term, we can divide it into two aspects. Firstly, in terms of uh, cash flow, I think we are looking at it from two angles. Firstly, to cut down or freeze wherever possible what you consider non-essential costs. So, mm. in a big firm, big firms like screen, we have a lot of. Uh, inter-firm events, sports competitions, conferences, allowances, a lot of these have been either cut down or have been frozen for now. On the other hand, there's been a push within the firm for us to uh, build clients for all the work previously done um, and to reach out to clients to see whether payment can be made, or whether payment arrangements uh, can be made. And I think really this is for an aspect to allow the firm to not rush into any decisions until you can be more certain on what your cash flow situation is. You don't want to rush into making extreme cost-cutting measures and then by luck or stroke have all your clients pay your money and then you'll cash rent too. Um, the second short-term um, measure the firm is taking, which I mentioned earlier, is because it's to try and optimize a lawyers to be able to carry out their work from home productively. Um, and that's really because the firm, as far as we know, has not taken a position that even once the MCO is lifted, it will not be business as usual. They want lawyers, they want staff to stay safe, stay healthy, and try to work from home if and where possible. But at the same time, you want to allow, give the lawyers the environment to carry out their work as efficiently as possible because the faster the turnover of work, the higher the quality of work, uh, the more opportunity there is for revenue cash flow to come in for billings to go up. So I think that's the short term goal. Uh, the mid term goal, which we're already seeing now, is uh, business development. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the firm is doing a lot of webinars. Uh, regularly and especially on the most likely the two biggest areas that could see an uplift of work uh, in the next six seven months actual disputes so i think webinars are out there they're being heavily publicized and really that is to to show our clients that a we are here for you we have the expertise that you need if you have any problems come to us two uh, to well market yourself to new clients uh, lawyers, clients are always going to be out there looking for lawyers. Uh, clients may have lawyers who specialize in a particular field of law uh, and they need expertise in a different area, which is where as a firm like Screen benefits because being a full service law firm, we can uh, give you options that your present law firm 
may not practice in or give you a package deal. Um, long term, I think it's really about uh, the firm probably looking at optimizing how do we run a more efficient uh, law firm, uh, which low cost, high output. And I think mm. that's really something that big firms are looking at now because with a big firm, very lucky or not, you come a lot of tradition, but you also come a lot of overheads, a lot of uh, baggage, which smaller boutique sneaker firms may not have. Mm. And I think one thing that the MCO has shown us at least is that work can be carried out from home uh, and we probably will have to be looking at work, working remotely for the next one or two years. Um, I, I I really like how screen, I mean, I know you said you're not in the management, but uh, uh, we understand like we're not, uh, to be fair, it's secret like, what the firm is. Every firm with their own secret process. I don't intend and we shouldn't be talking about it. But generally, I like how screen is... Uh, reinventing yourself you know you are a uh, a very big giant so it, uh, giants are very difficult to move you know and i think you guys are trying your best to move as much as you can and i think you're right the webinars uh the way forward i mean we are on the webinar now so uh it is the way forward and um and also you know names um can i just say this i think webinars like this like what we are doing now we give a sense of connectivity to the people so for this event, for example, we are doing with law firms, lawyers. We've got about 180 to 200 people logging in and on. And later on, this video will go viral. Last week's video went on for 2,000 over people watching. I got no who will watch this. They are more or less in KL. But every time they watch, they get hope. Uh, they get some idea, uh, inspired. So I think uh, what you just said may help some lawyers to review the way they work. Mm. Okay, Polim, uh, we heard two very interesting angles uh, uh, how uh, tp manage the cash flow weekly payment they review their fees uh, retaining uh, quality nimalan said the same thing quality of our service very important uh, but they are looking at ways internally to uh, sub suppress the cost and optimize the word uh, nimalan used to optimize the firm what are your short term mid term long term plans for uh, daniel and you uh, okay, thanks, Rick. I think uh, I was actually initially going to address this in the third part of your segment, you know, whereby, you know, what are the proposed uh, remedies or solution? So I think, uh, you know, before we address that, I think perhaps I can share with some of my observation as to the impact of this, uh, uh, the future impact of this uh, MCO and this COVID-19 situation on law firms. You know, uh, in terms of the corporate and commercial area, uh, I think uh, whoever that's practicing in this area, you know, we have to resign uh, to the fact that, you know, there will be significant reduction uh, in a lot of the usual corporate exercises, you know, your usual M&A works, your construction work, your oil and gas work, you know, this kind of work, you know, it, it will dry up uh, or perhaps, you know, you don't see it coming this year, right? Uh, companies, you know, would possibly be looking into consolidating their finances or reserves, you know, rather than investing in expansion activities. Uh, of course, you know, this does not apply to businesses supporting the pandemic, you know, such as the glove industries, the pharmaceutical businesses and so, so forth. So you will definitely see uh, in, in this year uh, that it will be significant reduction in the usual corporate exercises. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, for the real estate uh, practitioners, uh, I think uh, they will be hit really, really hard. Uh, the real property market will definitely face a strong resistance. Uh, you know, as many, a lot of people will actually be uh, relatively mindful uh, in committing to purchase a real property in the current economic climate. You know, that's the truth. Uh, apart from, you know, the usual business loan, uh, which the, the government and the banks are trying to encourage to SMEs, I think uh, it will be tougher for loan approvals for residential properties and so on and so forth. Uh, banks would be very much more mindful to one's ability to pay in the current climate. Uh, so I do expect higher rejection of loans, uh, lower margins of financing, uh, and sellers would probably not be too desperate to sell uh, during this moratorium period uh, if the property price dropped too significantly. So I do think it will be a very slow period for convincing practice in the next four to six months. So I think for law firms, uh, cash flow would be a major issue. Uh, 
uh, you know, you are going to expect, you know, lower and slower collection. It's it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, firms without reasonably strong reserves would struggle, especially if, you know, you have a huge fixed overhead. I know I understand uh, uh, Winston uh, has also mentioned, you know, what 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 uh, is the view that it will be, you know, the recommended percentage of financial reserve that a firm uh, should maintain. I think uh, what the rule of time, of course, uh, in the ideal scenario would be six months. I think uh, most firms should keep a reserve of six months, but I think uh, it is very difficult at the moment. Uh, the reason because, you know, normally when you calculate, you know, the reserves that you should have, uh, you will take into consideration slow collection or, 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 or not high collection. Uh, but we are now talking about zero collection. So I think uh, having at the very least, you will need at least three months uh, worth of reserve uh, would, would be important. Of course, I'm going to try to address this by, by having some uh, uh, what I think uh, would be useful uh, to implement uh, at this very moment uh, or post MCO uh, to 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 try to to improve on this situation. But perhaps I will take that in the next section. Mm, yeah, where we can talk about proposed solution. I, I sure. uh, very nice, uh, um, Pauline, because you have given a totally different angle from our two panels, which is what the purpose of having such a panel. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Polim speaking about his views of, about uh, real estate impact, impact on real estate, uh, even the way uh, corporate work may, uh, the character of the work and the the, uh, the movement of the work may also alter in many months to come. And if you, many of you are following Polim's uh, Facebook page, uh, uh, when the government announced six months suspension of our loans, all our loans, uh, uh, Polim wrote uh, very passionately and he even uh, pointed out, uh, calculated uh, the potential additional costs if we have to suspend our loan. Uh, and he, he, he proposed uh, uh, people to think carefully before you take the, uh, the, the suspension. So it's very well thought of. So some of you who are friends with him should go to that page and look. I, I was reading your comment, uh, Polim, and even shared it with uh, some of my friends who were thinking should they or shouldn't they uh, suspend the loan? Um, so I, clearly you have already um, uh, addressed your mind to it. So well done. Now, so can, if I take summarize the situation so far before we go on to the next topic, we've got 187 people online now. Thank you very much. Uh, in and out, people keep on going in and out. So I think easily about three, 400 people has, has, has watched this. Now, um, uh, so far, uh, the three speakers have mentioned that their respective firms have felt the impact, uh, even though they are in Clang Valley. And even though uh, firms like, for example, uh, uh, Cassandra's uh, law firm and uh, Nimelin's law firm, which are slightly larger law firms, they have felt the financial impact. They understand that there's a financial cash flow. Uh, and uh, Cassandra's law firm even pays salary out. Uh, even before MCO, I know... Uh, Thomas already mentioned in his Facebook, uh, TP pays salary every week, which controls the cash flow. And uh, uh, established and uh, experienced law firms like uh, Screen are already internally reviewing the way they work. And boutique and um, rising firms like uh, uh, Daniel's firm and Olim's firm are already adjusting and uh, predicting what is going to happen in months to come. For example, I repeat, slow work, uh, slow process, real estate in trouble, uh, and, um, and and I think we will we will see some changes there. But before we go to the next one, uh, since the two of you are litigants, litigation lawyers, uh, can I just get a quick view from the two of you, Cassandra and uh, Nimalan? What do you think is when I asked the same question last week, in the last last panel? What do you think is going to be the impact of COVID nineteen on the litigation process uh, for the next say six months? Cass? I think litigation processing, by, by that you mean um, timelines or... Yeah, the know, whole, even the, litiga even, the, sorry, sorry, uh, even the litigation services, do you think uh, a dispute resolution will still be a, a usual bread and butter for lawyers and, and taking into account, yes, the, the process in court, which is clearly changing? Okay, so two prongs. So firstly, let's um, talk about um, in terms of whether litigation, whether, whether litigation will still be there. I think... My personal view is that it will be there, because um, in times of, in times like this, I think there will be more disputes. 
but on at the same um i mean at the same time i'm i'm also sharing that we also have had clients basically telling us or potential clients who have inquired and have asked for advice we've asked you know for a fee quote coming back to us and saying i'm sorry i don't think i can do this now because mm. cash flow is tight so i think going back to again how are we pricing our services right i, I think th those are the kind of things that we need to start thinking about that there, mm. are, there are definitely going to be disputes there's definitely going to be work out there the question yeah. is how do you get the, those work that work into your firm through an attractive pricing package mm. for example that's one i think um the litigation process uh, in court um, there will definitely be a, a delay, I don't know, because based on all my files right now, we have all been um, getting extensions of time, all right, um, for, for filing of certain um, course papers. But there are certain dates which are already there and they're not being, they're not being adjourned, they're not being moved. So, so for those which are happening in June, July, I foresee that, you know, that's still going to be, be happening. Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee much, much change in in that regard i'm not mm. sure about um what's going to happen for example health wise do we really want to be you know in in, in court that much will the court be, be um open to that or th would they be more careful about things like that i'm i'm not too sure i think that's something that we have to see what, what happens later yeah i agree with you cassandra i think for litigation uh being a fellow litigator i'm, I'm one of the few lawyers who can do all three litigation corporate and convincing you know uh, I'm old school, so I learned, made sure I learned all three before I came out of my own firm. Uh, and But corporate was a, quite a new thing recently. But uh, I think litigation is wait and see, the litigation process. I, I agree with you. Nims, do you subscribe to what uh, Cassandra is saying? Anything you want to add or you want to tweak? I do, but uh, well, I was thinking more in terms of the court process. I think what we are really going to over the next six months, you're going to see a lot more uh, remote hearings, conducting hearings by Zoom, conducting hearings of uh, Microsoft Teams. And I think that addresses what Cassandra said about do we really want to get stuck in the court with a lot of people? The answer is going to be no. But at the same time, if you don't go to court, if you don't do hearings, your work does not move, you can't bill, you can't the cash flow. I think this is where lawyers will have to adapt and say, look, Um, we don't need to start doing all about hearings. Uh, we can no longer demand or adjourn hearings and or physical presence. Things have to get moving. Let's do it remotely. That's mm -hmm. one. A second, I'm hoping and I expect that courts uh, may eventually come up with a staggered timeline. So, for example, having hearings, fixing hearings on one hearing at 9 a.m., one hearing at 9.30, 10 a.m. And so that reduces the number of people in the court aimlessly waiting for the case to be called. You just turn up You're there for half an hour, you go through one door, the next comes in, here's and goes in to the other door. So you may, I, I saw a comment earlier about whether uh, we should be seeing shorter working hours in the courts due to the MCO. I actually think this may then see hours, longer working hours in the court, just because allowing the courts to stagger all the hearings to ensure their minimal contact between lawyers of different firms. Hmm. I like that. Good point. So the, instead of cutting it short, keep it longer and making yeah. sure very minimal people go in. Go in, get out, go in, get out, right? For those who have to do physical hearings. Yeah, good point, Nims. Uh, uh, well, you know, so far, ladies and gentlemen, 184 people now. We are going into the third part of our topic before we address Q&A. So um, the, for litigation process, both Cassandra and Nimelan have offered uh, their, their, um, their, I think their, uh, what, they, what they feel may happen that uh, probably litigation will be quite uh, 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 heavy, a lot more work, but uh, we may have to change the way we practice. And I think not only that, Nims, I think they also the, the court need to give us an SOP on how to do online hearings. And I can share with the two of you, I don't know whether you heard this, but I heard that the courts are experimenting with Skype for hearings. That, that is what I'm, I'm informed. Uh, but I have not been able to verify that. Okay, so now we are just nice. So we've talked talked about impact on the, the, our respective law firms, uh, impact on mid long term plans. What are in fact your mid term, short term, and long term plans? Now let's talk about proposed solution. What what 
what do you think um uh what do you think things can be done uh in the long term do we embrace technology the way we change uh, the way we work uh do we um uh, uh subscribe to work from home as a normal way blah 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 so can i invite cassandra in your view this is really a personal opinion i, I think it's not fair to uh, cast this opinion on your firm but what is your opinion if if you have you, the kind of ideas you can suggest to all the hundreds and thousands of lawyers who are listening in i think moving forward um i'm definitely all for embracing technology it's not to say that i love technology or or i enjoy it but i think it's it's a necessity i think we have to adapt and i think that's what's happening right now i mean for a firm like thomas philip we have been doing that we have been um using a lot of um um a, a lot of that um uh, even before the MCO, right? So we have a lot of um, uh, tools that we use in the firm. For example, we have I manage, we have Core Matter, we have a very very effective um, scanning system for fax for faxes that come in that that's linked to all our, to our emails and whatnot. Um, but I think right now, if we look at it, firms are trying to be more visible online. Firms are utilizing a lot of technology. So you can see a lot, like for example, now it's a very good example. We are doing a lot more webinars. We are, um, we are, we are active. For, for example, we have also rolled out an online news newsletter, which is basically we we, um, we email it out to all our contacts, our clients, so that basically um, it it's a change in how we we market ourselves as well, right? And how we, we reach out to, to clients. So um, so those are the things which I feel that we should start thinking about if we have not. And I think inevitably, we all need to, in some way or, or another, embrace technology. Yeah, I like it. it? And I like to tell uh, most lawyers that merely holding a phone like this does not equate to being technologically savvy. You know, there's a lot more things they need to do. Well said, because I, I can see that in your mind, and I suspect TP will also be in similar mode, that uh, you are looking at um, doing a lot of your work online, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, um, with all this working from, from home, we've, we've realized that it, it's, it's really workable. The only um, limitation right now that we have is that a lot of our textbooks are in the, in the office library. Uh, right. I think I tweeted this earlier that, you know, many years ago, actually, Matthew had this idea that that he threw at us and said, what if I took away this library? What if I tear it down and I and I convert it into an online library? What if I start scanning all the books and, and you know, saving them on, on our server? And I was one of the many people who objected to this idea. But while my, <laughs> colleagues, while my colleagues were saying that things like, oh, you may have copyright issues, you may have tra trademark issues. Are you sure you're, you're allowed to, to scan books that way? I just told him, I said, I want to go to work at a law firm that has a library. What is a law firm without a physical library? Yeah, so you know, yeah. to, to a great extent, we all have this mindset, you see, mm. this idea of what legal practice is traditionally like, what a law firm is traditionally like. And I think yeah. those kind of ideas need to be disrupted. I think um, post COVID-19, I think you start to, to rethink um, all these um, um, mindsets that we, we, we have. Yeah, because right now we're feeling it. We're feeling it. Um, mm. my, my team was just frantic last week saying, can we please get whole sprees on on your Lexis Nexis account, please? Because yeah. um, we, we've been so reliant on the copies in, in the library. Right. So so those are the kind of things that we are we are facing right now. Yeah, uh, I, I like the idea. Ebooks, ladies and gentlemen, those who are listening in ebooks going having an e-library. That's something all of us may have to consider. I think next time when we buy a book, it will go straight into your Kindle or into your handphone, right? Or your law firm may keep it in your Google Drive or your Microsoft uh, Drive, you know, uh, whatever Microsoft, well, I'm using Google Drive. So, okay, uh, Nimbalan, uh, what are the kind of uh, proposed uh, solutions you may, I, I suspect you and Cassandra could be on the same platform, but anything you want to say alternatively or change or add on, all yours. Four solutions may bring forward well. I guess Cassandra has talked uh, very much about uh, technology already. I think that's really where we're going to have to move forward. Uh, 
in the legal profession, embracing technology and not depending on physical materials or even a physical office for the next few months. Uh, so I think, I guess a different aspect will also be business development. I think being stuck at home during this movement control order, it may be a really good time for lawyers to start brushing up, exploring new areas for practice, learning, and consequently marketing yourself to existing clients, not just companies, but I also think it's a good chance for lawyers to maybe start reaching out to lawyers from other jurisdictions, um, Singapore, Australia, England, who do have clients who have matters in Malaysia, trying to build a relationship there. That is actually a very good source of work, which many lawyers don't tap into. Um, if you build a relationship with a law firm in Singapore, for example, or even with a particular lawyer, there can be a lot of cost referral of work, which mm. can keep you uh, going steady um, in the meantime. And I think one benefit about that is, I feel like many foreign companies or foreign clients may not, especially big clients, may not be hit as badly in terms of financials as smaller Malaysian companies. So getting these foreign clients could help you in a way keep a steady uh, inflow of cash uh, while waiting for your own local clients to make payments themselves. Mm. Interesting. So basically, uh, your, one of your proposed solutions is for firms your size is to look beyond yeah. the shores and perhaps uh, reach out to clients who can uh, possibly... Uh, continue to have the cash flow to engage lawyers, isn't it? That's one of your... Uh, and I think... Let me. Do you agree with me that you and Cassandra, you share Cassandra's view pertaining to technological embracement, correct? Yes. Yeah. And over and above that, you recommend that. Okay. Good. So for those big firms, uh, uh, Roger Darrell, Zico, uh, Alba, they may want to adapt what you said. That's pretty good. Yeah. Before I go on to uh, Polim, I think Rudy asked something interesting. He said, not going to lie. I thought I heard Richard Lee say, the next time you get a law book, it's going to go straight into your Tinder. No, I didn't say Tinder. I said Kindle. Kindle. But, uh, yeah, you can put it on Tinder if you want. Yeah, you just swipe. Yeah. Okay, Olim, you are a business owner, very lean and mean law firm. Um, what are your suggested solutions for firms your size? You know, uh, uh, firms between the size of 5 to 15 lawyers or five to 15 staff. What are the kind of proposed solution you can give them for a, from a Clang Valley point of view? All yours, Polim. Right, I think uh, as mentioned earlier, you know, I'm going to touch on things that you know, uh, most of us can do immediately at this juncture. So I've you know, thought about it and I've, I'm trying to summarize it into the four uh, remedies that I think we can do. The first three will be immediate remedies that I think all firms should do regardless of the size. Uh, number four, the first remedy that I'm talking about would really be uh, in the perspective of specialist firms. So that should address uh, uh, perhaps Lishi's uh, uh, question just now. Uh, and number no, the fifth one, I actually have a wish list. Uh, I want to address this technological uh, issue as well, but I'll leave it at the end of this, uh, towards the end of this uh, uh, proposed remedy that I'm trying to say. Right. Number one, I think, uh, you know, it's known fact. Uh, all law firms should immediately reduce their overhead. I'm not asking or I'm not saying that, you know, we should reduce uh, salaries. In fact, that is the last that, you know, we should look at. Uh, it's not the fault of the employees that, you know, this is happening, right? So so as best as possible, you know, they were there when, when we are making profit. So we should try to uh, maintain them and, and retain them or possibly retrain them, right? But I think we need to reduce overhead on non-essential uh, office spending. Number one thing that you should do if you not have already done so, uh, write to your landlord immediately. You know, uh, seek for a rental reduction or waiver. You know, forget about your 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 uh, ego. Just uh, write to them and ask for a, a rental reduction. The first thing, you know, uh, especially now with the double tax deduction allowable to landlords. You know, in some uh, sectors, uh, the SME sectors. You know, most landlords. You know, you'll be surprised that you know they will be prepared to do so. Uh, similarly, you can speak to your photocopier, uh, whether they can revise their rental rates, look into your utilities, look into your stationary spending, look into every single aspect of your spending and try to manage that uh, aspect. I know that is number one, uh, not just law firm, every business should do at the moment. Look into your spending, right? Uh, number two, uh, you know, we are not 
a firm that you know exactly the most tech savvy we don't have resources to spend uh, uh, on you know organizing webinars uh, uh, seminars or, or, or you know this kind of thing so what we adopted is that we we adopted a more personal approach you know uh, we speak to our client we touch base with them we reassure them uh, we try to assist uh, them wherever possible uh, on a goodwill basis you know don't don't think of you know oh okay i want to get this work and i will charge you for it i think important is to support them at this juncture i think that that is very important so instead of doing a wide uh, seminar or webinar to to try to cater to a large crowd we are actually focusing on our existing client and trying to support this existing client to make sure that they can get through this period uh the third point that i'm trying to say uh is that you know uh, we need to plan for 2021 I think we can forget about 2020 uh, as bosses uh, don't place uh, high hopes in you know taking in good profit this year you know so what i think we all should do is that immediately uh, prepare our budget uh, calculate what are the minimum overheads you know that we need to spend on our firm just to survive on a monthly basis use that as a yardstick as to what you need to collect monthly right once you have determined that uh, we look into your billings with your clients I'm not asking, you know, I'm not suggesting that, you know, you should go for a price war, but we must understand that uh, our clients are also facing difficulties like you and I, they are looking to reduce overhead as well. They are looking to cut down whatever unnecessary spending as well. So help them manage their overhead. So chasing them for fees at the moment is disastrous. You know, it's it's good, you know, to say, you know, we have done the work, you know, come and pay us. But I think chasing fees now would be disastrous. So having calculated, you know, what you need monthly, uh, renegotiate with your clients, get, uh, give them flexibility in paying your fees. That, that could be critical or possibly you could reduce your existing fees with them and, and instead you propose a quicker or a structured payment of fees. That means uh, in return of a reduced fees, you pay me uh, now or you pay me in a structured format so that I know how much I can collect every month to manage my cash flow. So, I mean, I'm just speaking from a perspective of a business owner uh, in no. that respect. So managing your cash flow in that respect, it's, it's quite uh, uh, important. Uh, so because I always believe, you know, no point you having, you know, very high fees, high billing, high invoices, but you cannot collect. Uh, with the fee reduction, you know, we can also tell the client that, you know, we understand you and we are ready to take the plunge with you during this time. Uh, forget about the profit uh, if your clients fundamentals are very strong you know they will bounce back very quickly and they will remember this gesture so remember uh, building a relationship is actually very important in every business including law firm so this is a time to show that you know you mean what you're saying you care for them so this is exactly a period whereby you should look into that uh, uh, mm. on the fourth remedy that I'm going to talk about uh, it's actually uh, more for uh specialist firm like 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 ours you know i think we need to be uh creative in in offering our services to client uh i am thinking of something that is a little bit more uh, uh, uh extreme in the sense that i think a specialist firm will need to probably explore offering bundle or package services to clients uh, for example you know uh if you're a specialized corporate firm right uh, we must take note and accept that certain type of work will not be there in 2020. As mentioned earlier, you know, your M&As and oil and gas work and all, you are not going to get those kind of work, I think. Or even if there is, uh, it will be very uh, much reduced. So no point spending your resources, your limited resources, investing in these areas at the moment, you know, doing your business development and in these areas and all. I think it's, it's pointless, right? So... Uh, and if you are aware based on you know what's going on uh, on the social media you will take note that you know companies and clients are now in uh, restructuring and reorganization phase in 2020 uh, so that you know once they go through this period in 2021 they will they will have their business running again so 2020 will be a recovery year not just for law firm but for your clients as well so mm. what they actually need will be a lot more advisory rather than the actual corporate exercises so for us you know possibly we will work with say an employment specialist firm and then what we do is we can offer to client a blended or a bundled advisory uh, service to a client for a fixed fee or something like that i mean i'm just throwing some ideas out there so uh, do not do not be afraid uh, to to share uh, 
share your profit with with other uh, uh, expert in different areas and offer uh, advisory a uh, blended advisory uh, uh, to the client uh, because you know bigger firms can cross refer internally but boutique firms like us we can also compete with such structure uh, because clients would actually want to go to a one-stop center. It's very normal for advices and solution uh, at affordable rates. So if we are saying that, oh, we only do this kind of work, uh, we can't offer you that kind of advices and so on and so forth. So they will be uh, spending unnecessary resources managing different law firms. So if let's say we can work together and we can provide such a blended services, then perhaps that will help the client in, 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 uh, uh, in greatly, right? So when they are ready to do business again in 2021, uh, hopefully, you know, they will remember this, you know, you are there to support them, providing them services, and they will mm -hmm. come back to you. Uh, and the the full corporate firm, you know, instead of zero fees, because you're harping on, you know, your M&As and your, your, this kind of work that is not there, uh, at least you'll get fixed fee from client just to manage your overhead during this period. I think that is quite uh, 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 important. So basically what I'm trying to say is that, you know, improvise, try to understand your client's immediate uh, needs and provide an affordable solution to them. Uh, I actually have a wish list and we are talking about, you know, corporate, but in terms of convincing practice and technology, I think you can have the best technological system, your best infrastructure at home in office, but it will not work if the authorities are not uh, there, right? Uh, they do not, for example, the land office are still very archaic. Uh, mm. The certain government offices are still very archaic. So you can have all these things, you can work from home, but they still need you to present at the land office. They still need the attestation by black ink pen in front of whatever commission of so and so forth. So unless the laws change significantly, you know, you, you, if there's no point investing tens of thousands in infrastructure uh, and technology because for firms that are practicing in those areas, it doesn't work. What's the point, yeah. right? So, yeah. so I think uh, what Memes and what Cass has mentioned is very good, especially for larger firms or for certain uh, type of work. But for a lot Hello. Hi, Kofana, can you hear me? Yep, I can, I can. No, I'm sorry, I think it was my house internet. It just dropped uh, oh, completely. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I hope we are still... I, I don't, are we still on live on Facebook? Hang on, let me check. Um, hang on. Uh, Sorry, sorry, speaker. Sorry, I think it was my house. Sorry, sorry, it just dropped to zero. Sorry, sorry. Are we back on online? Let me check. Huh? Sorry, huh? sorry, sorry. Uh, you um, and I thought we were supposed to get free. Ah, we are back. We are back. Okay, everybody. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, technical problem. I think we uh, there's a due to the change of government. Uh, no more, no more goblin in charge. So the internet went different. Ready? Uh, they're just kidding. Okay. Um. Sorry, uh, Paul, you were just at the point of your wish list where saying that uh, no use if we do all this, but if the government doesn't improve, you were at impact about the black ink point, 
and whatnot on the convincing all yours uh, uh polim right right so so what i'm just trying to say is that i think uh we need a strong bar council uh to lead this to now really push the government officers to embrace technology to to move into perhaps you know your your uh the convincing to move into online system you know you probably have an e-presentation and and you know uh, using technology so that it will will minimize us having to go uh, to land office or having the the, the dispatch or the, the 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 all these people going to the to the land office. So I think that that's number one. Uh, I think I think bar council really really need to sit and understand uh, what what all of us are facing on the ground, the practical side of it. And perhaps, you know, when before they even talk about suggesting lawyers to embrace technology, I think they need to, to speak to the stakeholder and ensure the stakeholder uh, push for all these uh, uh, advancement in technology and, and they also embrace technology so that it's sync. Otherwise, it doesn't really work. So I yeah. think that's that's my wish list for the BC to actually push for uh, 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 this time. Oh, well said. Well done, Polim. Well done. I think you really covered, uh, not only you covered the part, you, in fact, effectively answered many questions on the, on the Q&A. So, well done, well done. Uh, before I move on, uh, uh, Cassandra and uh, Nimalan, would you like to, you, is there anything you want to add on to what uh, Polim to say or you want to say a few words about it? Nothing from me. Cass? Nothing, yeah. Because he said four things. Uh, uh, Cass, yeah. yes, Cassandra, yes? Yeah, I, I think um, Kenneth is really, really on, on point on about um, forgetting about 2020 because that's really where Th Thomas Philip is heading as well. Um, we are very well aware that um, whatever plans that, that we are putting in place, whatever business development efforts, whatever marketing efforts that we're doing, it's all going to be for a better 2021, if not for, for a great 2021. So I think um, in, 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 that, in that regard, I, I'm in agreement with, um, with Kenneth, right? In terms of negotiating rental and all that, um, I'm also in agreement with him. Um, the one thing that I wanted to to add on, and I think um, there's a question from Li Shi um, on on technology and and the bar council. Um, I am of course of the view that um, we need we need we need the bar council to support us and to okay we can go up to that question. I'm Going looking up. for it. Um, yep. Is it this one? Yes, that's that's the one. Um, I think definitely. I I that's my hope. Really, if, if Kenneth has that wish list, I, I do have, it's in my wish list that um, the bar will start embracing the fact that we all need to embrace innovation. We need to embrace technology. Um, there's also another another question about virtual office, which is something that I, I was thinking about actually, because for the plain reason, when we are looking at our cost, our cash flow, we all feel that rental is obviously one of the, the main things for, for, I think I can imagine for a lot of firms, that may make up one of your, your more substantial expense. And for a firm the size of Thomas Philip, I would say yes, you know, rental is going to be a major expense for us. So with this whole COVID situation and how everyone's been working from home, using technology to assist us, I think we need to start thinking of, about of this question. Do actually all lawyers need to have a physical office? Does um a phys the, do we really need to to um have a physical appearance to be visible? I think thinking ahead, my clients are requesting for Zoom meetings, are requesting for web uh, sorry uh, video conferencing through WhatsApp and whatnot. I think when we talk about this new normal, perhaps we should be prepared that the new normal is that maybe clients will be saying to us, "Hey, do I really need to get through you know um, the one hour traffic to get to your office to look for parking in Desasri Hatamas?" Um, just to see you for a couple of for, for half an hour, forty five minutes, right? So I'm I'm not. I mean, I, this is just my my views that I think we need to start thinking about these things. We need to start talking about them. We need to start embracing the fact that I think not not all of us really need a physical law firm to run yeah. our practice and to operate. And uh, and and that we definitely need the the bar council to support yeah. us with, with that. And with the manner in which we are now trying to be visible online where does our advertising rule stand are they still relevant in this in this um, scenario in this situ in this current situation when everyone's going to do webinars online we're using so much of social media to basically do branding 
So I think um, a lot of that <coughs> need to be seized support. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying, Cassandra. I think uh, all three of you spoke really well o on that point, uh, on issue of advertising, Cassandra. I, sometimes, um, okay, I'm going to say something quite controversial. Um, and of course, I speak from my experience in Bar Council, elected member for many years. And some of you know I was a secretary at one time and even in KL Bar, I was secretary. I think sometimes people, they're selective on when they can advertise and cannot. Uh, when their friends put up on their social media that they won a 39B case, you see the same fella saying, yes, well done. And then when a law firm announced that they just got nominated for a few awards, uh, that's advertising. So uh, it's, uh, it's very selective uh, when it comes to advertising. Um, but I think, uh, I think, um, but I think times have changed, um, especially now. Uh, and on webinar, for example, let me just share with the three of you. The Bar Council, through my uh, PSDC committee, as you know, I chair the Professional Standards Development Committee to run the CPD program. We wanted to experiment with webinar as late as last year, but we knew members will not take up webinar. But now, uh, today's talk with uh, Anand Raj, there are 500 people <laughs> log on to watch. So time has changed, and yeah. maybe practice must change too. Right Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's only 6.15. Speakers, are you in a rush? Are you going to like go out and buy your chicken rice, fried rice, or something? Can can we do five minutes of Q and A? Sure, sure. Okay, sure, uh, sure. can I just add something? I think I think I just wanted to to add on. I think uh, we have to realize that you know a lot of uh, firms, a lot of people are always trying to portray you know uh, things are very good and you know they have a lot of you know positive uh, 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 kind of like you know appearance on social media. I think. We need to understand that, you know, and a lot of us will then feel, oh, am I in, you know, am I doing something wrong? Uh, why, why am I, why is my firm struggling when everyone is doing so well? I think I just want to share that I think everyone uh, is struggling. I think, I think it's a fact. It, it's, it's no matter how pretty or how good they portray they are doing, I think everyone is struggling. I think that's a fact. So having a good uh, team of mentor, uh, for example, uh, would help, you know, uh, put aside your ego, go and ask uh, how, uh, you know, what are the steps taken by uh, other firms? How are they going about it? Ask your close friends and adopt the good and whatever that's reasonable or practical to your setup. Uh, take those so do not be shy so you know go and ask your former bosses go and ask your peers go and ask you know people from different different practices and and take the positive out of it rather than you know thinking oh i'm in the you know i'm not doing as well as a lot of my peers no i think that is not uh how we should address this yeah well said very good very good uh we've got a few more minutes uh lee she keep on saying i need to know this pm me please so all three of you pm him later but I think the issue question uh, um, was about these uh, retooling themselves. Um, uh, not this one, this one. Uh, not just for poorly, but I think it's about uh, he's asking about what the tips for corporate lawyers to retool or broaden areas. Hold on, uh, don't answer yet. So there's one question we can look at. The other one was uh, this issue of uh, um, um, employment, that this one um, by Monira. Um, any of you considering letting redundant employees go? If yes, how? It's a very controversial area. Um, so it's very sensitive to talk about this now. But without having to corner any of you, maybe you can generally speak later about employment matters. So one is retooling, not just for corporate work, even though Lishi said that, but what do you think lawyers can do to retool themselves? And secondly, the issue of employment. Uh, and then I think one last question we can look at is here, where... I think Darren Lai asked this question. Let me find a uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, are there? Even though it's addressed to Polim, I think all three of us to answer. What are your, how are you getting your non lawyer staff to be active during MCO and WFH? So, can I first ask Sandra, uh, first question about uh, the issue of retooling, and secondly, about generally employment of the firm, and uh, basically, this is connected to that. What do you do with your non lawyer staff? Yes. Okay, uh, Richard, can I just trouble you to go back to Lishi's question? Because sure. I kind of like, I'm not can, too sure what the not. question is. Can you ask about this? Retool and, and 
or to broaden to other areas? Yeah, maybe all three of you can answer this first. I think it's a very good question. And let's not, mm. even though we talk, we talk about corporate, but let's see what we can retool our lawyers for litigation also. Huh, Nibelin? Cass, you want to try? Or you want to give Pauline yeah. the time? Yeah, maybe Pauline tries, but let me, let me, let me have, a, have a thought. Ah, good. Uh, very good litigator. Very good. Think first before you talk. <laughs> Uh, I think I think I actually have addressed that uh, earlier. Yeah, you did. I think probably Li Shi, Li Shi just wanted uh, 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 me to to PM him. Uh, I suppose, but I think like I mentioned, I think we need to look. Uh, number one, I don't think that any of us uh, can suddenly be a great employment lawyer. I know I can't now go out and advertise that hey, I do employment law. I'm a great employment lawyer. I think that's a mistake which I think in my opinion that a lot of people are doing suddenly we have an influx of uh, expert in employment law suddenly we have an influx of expert in restructuring law I think we have to accept the fact that you know this is not our area of practice and if we're going to offer these services to our clients and they're not going to get a correct or proper uh, uh, advisors then it could spell a lot more trouble for the client mm -hmm. so hence what i mentioned is that you know we still continue practicing what we are doing but look into instead of you know pushing for any deals we look into advisory then we work together with a specialist firm who are really good in that area and we offer a blended service to the client yeah. tell them, look you know during this time you know you're not going to do any deal but you probably will need someone to look into your employment issues you probably need someone to look into your your corporate issue you probably need someone to look into your restructuring issues so you know you can come to us you know we can assist you uh, we are not going to charge you a lot we want to go through with you during this period uh, and you know we share work i think i think yeah. that's what uh, specialist firms should try looking into so i think uh, that is probably what we are going to do uh, in terms of retooling not really retooling per se but perhaps changing uh, how we're going to uh, uh, address client how are we going to package to our client mm. i like it rebundling very good in fact like i said you said you've already answered but i think uh, uh, this question uh, is also nice for nimbleland nims you want to try and, and make it sweet sure, sure, because um, six twenty. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking you all can talk, but I don't know whether how long you all want to go makan dinner or. Okay, okay, Richard. But I think from a litigation perspective, uh, Pauline is right that you can't really be become a specialist in a different area of law uh, um, overnight. So I think what actually from a litigation perspective, I think will be beneficial for lawyers is to use this slow down to start improving their skills. Uh, using the time to improve their knowledge, maybe in the areas of that they are really practicing, um, read up on advocacy skills, more webinars. So that doesn't it doesn't give you an influx of cash right now, but if you play the long term game, it will help you become a better litigator, a better lawyer. And when yeah. the market is better, you will be more in demand. Okay, good point. Cass, you want to try this so before we yeah, suffer yeah. short term pain, but long the next two three years, this could be beneficial. I definitely echo what both um, Kenneth. I, I definitely I echo um, both what what both Kenneth and Nimalin have said, but I, I do think that at some point again I'm very mindful about how um, our, my practice is structured, how Thomas Philip is is running its practice. We all are in 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 a way right at the very beginning of our, our careers. We have already been identified which areas we're going to specialize in. So for me, the option of now suddenly becoming an employment lawyer and talking about employment is just not there. Yeah. Because I have spent my years, seven years of, of practice, almost seven years of active practice, um, building a, a niche area in, in probate, in contentious probate. So that option is just not, not open to me. But I mm. do understand why we see a, a number of firms which Okay, sometimes we, we feel like it's, it's a bias. We think that, oh, suddenly this person's talking about employment, suddenly they're talking about, about construction. But I think we, sh we can take a step back and say whether or not maybe that the firm's nature of practice is that they do a multi multidisciplinary area, multi-practice, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, well, that's, that's, that's one. But I, I do yeah. feel that there, there is some... Um, no, no rush to basically say that oh my, my practice area is irrelevant in this in this time. I think it's about how you brand it, how you package it. I still feel that estate planning is absolutely relevant, whether or not you know in, in this pandemic or, or not. So that's for yeah. example, I'm, and I'm speaking from from my my own perspective. And I think any corporate commercial litigator would say the same because in the, in the times like this, 
contractual disputes. It's everywhere. So it's it's a it's a matter of how you repackage and you rebrand your um, current practice area. Well said. Well said. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's already six twenty. What I'll do is this. I won't ask any more questions, but I'll invite each speaker to give you a summary, which you can add in whatever comments you want to add in, and then we will call it a day. So maybe the other way around, can I invite Pauline first to give you a summary, followed by Nimalan and then Cass? Pauline, any right, summary? Right. I, I don't think there's any summary. I, I just wanted <laughs> to, to answer Munira one question uh, uh, yes. in terms of, you know, uh, uh, whether we are cutting uh, uh, employees. I think we are we are not uh, at the moment, unless this uh, MCO is going to be extended until year end, then you've got no choice. But at the moment, you know, we, 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 we have been closely monitoring our reserves. We have been closely monitoring uh, uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. And we intend to keep all of them. Uh, that's number one. Number two, to Darren Lai's uh, question as to the, the, the you know, non-lawyer staff, what are we doing with them? I think uh, we don't have that many, uh, but at the moment, uh, we prior to the MCO being implemented, we have already, uh, uh, our firm has a system, uh, in respect of this non-lawyer uh, uh, staff, they are usually in uh, the litigation club or the, the, the convincing club. So I, I can only explain from convincing club perspective. So what, what we have done is that, you know, we have always have a system of a schedule whereby, you know, uh, the staff need to update uh, every single file that they're doing uh, on a weekly basis. So what, what we are, what we, what I got them to do during this period is to uh, we look into all these files based on the schedule uh, and then uh, list down what are the steps that they are going to take uh, to expedite the, the matter, to try to close the matter as soon as possible. What they need to do uh, post MCO immediately, you know, uh, step one, step two, step three, and they can start preparing whatever letters uh, so that, you know, when it, when it comes to office opening, then they can immediately print it out and get it signed and get it delivered. So I think that's what we are trying to do with our uh, non-lawyer staff. Yeah, so I think that summarizes what, what we are doing now. Well, good. Very good. Very good. Basically, I heard you said earlier, you are holding on to all your stuff. No one is uh, losing their job. I remember you said just now. And that's good. Keep it up. H hang in there. Yeah. Uh, Nims, uh, your summary? Sure. Anything uh, you want to tell me? Well, I think uh, what people should be looking at is what Pauline touched on earlier in the session is, don't look at it short term, look at it long term. Where do you want to see your in 2022, 2023, for example. And I think I would have two points to say to that. Firstly, um, I think it's been the underlying theme of our discussion today, embracing technology. Um, and this would have to come not only for lawyers, but also for your non-legal staff. How best can your lawyers, can your non-legal staff carry out their work, carry out their billings from home? And knock on effect for litigators, how best can you carry out hearings remotely? Think, mm. Assume that you're not going to be allowed to go back to court for physical hearings for the next six months. Start preparing yourself for this and start embracing technology. That's one. Mm -hmm. um, two, I think um, this may answer Mokira's question. Uh, as far as I know, it's green. There are no plans right now uh, to make any employees redundant. Uh, there's been no announcement of any deferment or pay salary cuts. Uh, I can share you what I was told back during the 1998 financial crisis. Uh, what screen did was they froze increments, um, they froze promotions. And then they paid it back to the employees later on when the uh, when it's recovery from the crisis. I think it's something firms should be looking at. Uh, don't necessarily cut your employees' salaries, employees' benefits. Don't un unnecessarily cut them or make them redundant if you can, because you long term you want to keep your employees happy, especially if they're very good. You want to keep them in the firm. Uh, mm. I think employees uh, generally do understand that, that all firms are suffering, and they will accept. Uh, freezes in their pace or maybe even temporary pay cuts but it will also come with looking at what happens when the recovery comes would we get a payback for sticking with the firm through the, the yeah team? and i think this is something firms have to look at not just cut but how do you reward employees who then stay with you through the difficult times i, li I like basically nimalan you're looking at uh, redistributing your uh, cash flow you know asking our our team members to hold on You'll come back later, right? Yes. Well, well done. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Cass, your summary. Uh... Yeah, maybe in, in my summary, I'll just um, address those two um, qu questions um, very shortly, very quickly, because I think I, I do have something to add um, to that question about how how are our non-legal staff working from home effectively? 
Um, this is quite uh, amusing. I think Nimalyan and I did discuss and we were quite shocked also that our printing boys were actually equipped with the tools at home um, right at the start of MCO to assist us. And the reason for this was because when the first part of the MCO um, was was announced, we had um, some of our some of us had trials scheduled immediately after the MCO, and it didn't seem like um, a German was was going to to happen. So so yeah, so we did actually using um, technology, using um, um, <clears throat> uh, whatever tools that we have, uh, digital tools that we have, we we have managed to keep our um, uh, non-legal staff working from home and assisting us um, mm. in, in those processes and making our bundles and scanning the bundles over to us and, mm. and whatnot without moving around actually. And for example, um, we are still receiving faxes or uh, I don't know how, but um, at, I think at the beginning of the MCO, there were some faxes coming in. There was um, now, now everyone's moved on to, to emails, right? And we have um, um, a staff who's basically monitoring all the emails, all the letters that's coming in and sending them out on a daily basis to all the the respective lawyers. So those are systems which have already been in place um, even before the, the MCO. So we are just, you know, um, they're just doing it from home right now. Um, yeah. The second thing, on, uh, the other question, which is on redundancy of em employees um, for our firm, our managing partner right, right at the start of the MCO has, has um, announced that no one's going to be losing their jobs this year, unless of course they, they, they choose to leave, but that is not, on, not, not in the cards for us. Um, there are there were talks that if things do get bad, um, there 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 may be um, salary cuts for the partners. So it has to come from from the top. Like like I said earlier on, we have already agreed for bonuses or profits, if any, keyword if any this year to be to be deferred over twenty weeks. So I think in in terms of that, we are all trying very hard to keep our people because um, again we we think that this is temporary. Um, in, in summary, I, I do think that this is a temporary um, situation. We just have to get through this. And after that, um, it depends on what we do in this in this time. 2021 could be a great year. Yeah, I like it. Well done. Uh, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's already 6.30. We went half an hour beyond. But that's because the, the nature of the topic is so vibrant. Uh, I would like to... Can I in, invite everybody? There's about 100 old people who are still around. Can we give the three speakers a round of applause, you know, cyber applause, you know. Well done, well said, and I think they came prepared. Uh, they knew what they wanted to help and deliver. Um, secondly, uh, I think to summarize the uh, entire dialogue, the, the currently things are challenging. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but if you look internally, like what Polim and Nimalan say, internally, the firms can review the, the work. Um, I think uh, firms like TP, uh, Thomas Philip give a very good way of managing cash flow uh, in the long term, mid, short, mid, and long term plans, uh, heavily revolving around technological embracement, but also change of behavioral pattern. Our behavior need to change. The way we uh, conduct ourselves uh, need to change. I like Paul Lim's way idea of uh, for boutique firms like him to bundle services. And I like how uh, Nimbalan offered ideas of developing yourself, business development, uh, build, you know, keeping the firm relevant. And I like how um, Thomas Philip maintained that, look, you know, we will do all we can to protect our stuff and we will maintain our fees. We will not go into price more. That is they're all very commendable and uh, practical way to move forward, right? So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for logging on. Uh, speakers, anything last week? One more, what, maybe another five seconds, anything? No. Yeah, well, well done, three of you. Thanks for having us. Thanks yeah, for staying. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. Have a good dinner. And uh, just one last day, uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., uh, we are hosting the two presidents of the bar, the Sabah bar and the Malaysian bar speaking tomorrow. And that will be about policy matters. Can we reopen our firm, can, uh, the impact of law uh, the, on the bar as a whole? Uh, etc. etc. So tomorrow, 11 o'clock live here on uh, RWC's Facebook page. Nimalan, thank you. Polim, thank you. Cassandra, okay. thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, we all need to be together. We need to do this together. And my favorite phrase for now is that together we will prevail. So we just need to be together and we will prevail. Thank you very much. Adios, amigos. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.